again, everybody. I am Mike Greenberg, and welcome to the IBM Fantasy Football League Draft Special. We have a terrific show for you. We're going to be talking fantasy football with two-time champion Eli Manning, Hall of Fame safety Ed Reed, and former defensive end and ESPN analyst Marcus Spears. Then we'll be getting expert advice from our own ESPN analyst, Sage Steele, Field Yates, and Stefania Bell. And finally, we'll be joined by our friends at IBM Sports for our very own Fantasy League Draft. Now, I'm biased for a lot of obvious reasons, but I really do believe that ESPN's fantasy platform stands out from all of the others. And one special feature that I love in the ESPN Fantasy app is Watson. Watson, of course, is the artificial intelligence that provides all of the incredible insights that enable managers to choose the very best lineups week in and week out. If you've ever been on the platform, you know all about the boom and bust tools and the multiplayer comparisons. But the one thing that has always been difficult in Fantasy League is trades. Trades, at least in theory, are meant to bolster our lineups. But we all know how apprehensive both sides can be about a potential trade. Well, enter Trade Assistant with Watson, which by aggregating literally millions of data points will devise win-win trade propositions for you and your fellow managers throughout the season. All right, in just a few minutes, we will be drafting our first round picks. But first, let's meet our stars. We begin with Eli Manning, Ed Reed, and Marcus Spears. Eli, I will start with you. When you were playing, how much did you pay attention to fantasy and, and keep tabs on your stats? Well, you definitely heard it from the fans, and it, it changed over the years. As fantasy football got more popular, all of a sudden the fans started coming up and complaining that even though you won the game, maybe you had a two-minute drive, you kicked a game-winning field goal to win a tight battle 24-21, yet they're disappointed and upset with you on Monday morning because you only threw one touchdown and, and 200 yards. You didn't get them enough fantasy points, and it, it kind of happened vice versa. You'd lose a game, but you threw four touchdowns, and 350 yards and people are high-fiving you on Monday. So it kind of confused you as a player. You, you know, you, you want to win games. That's how we play. That's all we care about. But your fans uh, sometimes just cared about how they were doing on their own fantasy football team. No question. That's what the fans are about. Marcus, how about the players? You hear more and more guys talking about their fantasy stats. Is that part of the locker room conversation now? Yeah, man, we used to get into it. I mean, you think about you think about the players, and and once it once it started to evolve and it became this big thing, dudes was checking in on their fantasy status because it does have sort of a direct correlation to how well you're doing on the field in a lot of cases, especially when you talk about the individual players. So it's something that became prevalent in the locker room, and usually the fantasy the high fantasy point guys were the guys that had the big checks that were coming through the locker room as well. So it's a correlation that that guy started paying attention to, G. All right, Ed Reed, you're one of the greatest players of all time, maybe the greatest in the history of position. So again, everyone wants to know your strategy. What is your strategy to win this fantasy league this season? Man, look here. I had to call a few people who I know play fantasy football and just see how this this really goes. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've done it before, but I wasn't very good. You know, so I had to do a little research. You know, I'm going to rely on Watson. You know, I got my computer here in front of me. All right. Now, you guys know ESPN is introducing Trade Assistant with Watson to play their fantasy platform this year. It identifies and proposes trades within a league that will benefit both sides equally looking for value and fairness. Now, Marcus, as a player, you were actually traded. Do you have any thoughts on the value and fairness of those transactions? Well, I don't know if the team I was traded to got the value and fairness from the team that I left. <laughs> but, but it's definitely one of those situations where you hopefully in that situation you upgrading or the team that, that traded you is getting some value back for it. And it's amazing what Watson is doing because when you look at it, it takes some of the guesswork out of it for you as an individual. It's no more about feeling good. Does it look good? Are the numbers right? So that, I mean, and basically that's what front offices are doing. They're trying to assess the value in the guy that we're getting as opposed to what we're giving away. So, yes, it's not fun to be traded, but sometimes you trade it into a better situation. 
All right, now we are going to be doing a traditional snake draft, so you're not going to be able to take all the players that you would want. So I'm going to ask each of you, if you could take your top choice at a variety of positions, who would you take? And so, Will, I'll start with you. You were a quarterback, so if you could have any quarterback in this draft, who would be your first pick? Well, I think there's so many you know, great quarterbacks. For me, I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes just because he has uh, so many great receivers out there. They have the big play potential. He can run and get yards. Uh, you know, Obviously, Lamar Jackson is another guy, but he runs too much. I don't know anything about that. It's just too complex <laughs> for me. I never ran for – I think I had like 12 yards rushing my entire career. It would be natural to assume that former players might have the edge in fantasy because they understand football's nuances better than most people. But hold on a minute. We have got some IBM ballers in this league, one of whom happens to be the defending champ, Noah Sykin, VP of Sports and Entertainment Partnerships. His colleague, Elizabeth O'Brien, is as serious a fantasy player as there is. And Aaron Bauman is the brains and architect behind Insights by Watson on the ESPN Fantasy app. So he knows better than anyone how to get the most out of all of that artificial intelligence goodness. Noah, I'll start with you. The obvious question for many of us is this. Watson is a serious AI for serious business. Why use it for fantasy football? Yeah, well, fantasy football is serious business as well. ESPN has over 10 million people playing on the platform every single week. This platform needs to stand out. It needs to be differentiated. It needs to be better than other platforms. And we think AI is one of the reasons it is better. More importantly, ESPN has customers. In this case, there's fantasy football customers. In the real world, there's business customers. Every business has a client they need to listen to, to understand the natural language uh, that they're expressing about their business. So whether it's fantasy football language or business language, uh, the organizations need to understand the texture that's in that language. And also, you know, people really need to have an experience with AI. They need to understand what value it offers them and what value it offers their business. And so we think we can make that connection between business and passion points like fantasy football by bringing AI to the ESPN platform. Aaron, the new IBM tool that we're excited about is Trade Assistant, which will serve up win-win propositions to managers throughout the season. Tell us a little bit about how that sausage is made. What data will Watson be using to determine what trades make the most sense? Yeah, this project's quite amazing. You know, we take in all these streaming statistics that include suspensions, injury reports, as well as IR. But this year, we have to take into account COVID-19 state, which is very unprecedented. But then we also look at all the natural language processing algorithms that we apply to the different and millions of articles that we get um, into our system. And we wrap that up into what's called a fair value estimation for all the players involved in a potential trade. But on the other side of the coin, we have to look at the cost. What is the cost that each player would give up for your team? And so this makes sure that we have equal equity across incoming players, outgoing players, so both teams have upside. And also keep in mind that all of these insights are on demand, right? So, so we're serving millions upon billions of different requests in real time for you so that you can pick the best trades for your team. Elo, Watson is known for its ability to analyze massive amounts of data and help users make critical decisions, but this is fantasy football, so we're here to have fun. How does bringing Watson to the ESPN Fantasy app make fantasy more fun? Well, Greeny, look who's in this league. We've got football experts, we've got fantasy experts, and me, and Watson. And so Watson, using natural language processing, is going out and reading thousands of articles and blog posts and listening to podcasts every day to help everyone, including me, make better roster decisions and set my lineup so I can win more games. And this year, we're introducing Trade Assistant. And look, nobody trusts the other person when they're trading, especially if you're trading with Aaron. <laughs> so this year... With Trade Assistant, I know I'm going to feel more confident about my trades, and I'm going to win more games. Okay, next we are going to bring in ESPN anchor Sage Steele and fantasy and injury expert Stefania Bell. And we know that nearly half of the football fan base is comprised of women, 47% according to the league. Sage, let me start with you. When you talk to your friends and female colleagues, how much do you see that representation crossing over into fantasy? 
Uh, honestly, Greeny, I am floored at how much it has changed in the last five to ten years. I mean, I used to be the only chick in the league back in the day, and now there's a couple leagues that I'm in where there's there's more women than men. I will say this, in my family league, and it is a trash-talking, usually ugly, steel family fantasy league, there are more women than men. So I'm just saying, it's, it's conversation everywhere, and that's what I love, because again, back in the day, you used to be kind of the only one, and guys would poke at you and question you and now all of us ladies are in there and the last three years in the steel family league um women have won i'm just saying all right and stefania you are so associated with fantasy in so many different ways (laughs) what do you hear about it well, look, I've been trying to encourage women to play fantasy football ever since I got involved, which was a number of years ago. But I will tell you, I think people might be surprised by how competitive women are. And whether it's an all-ladies league or whether it's co-ed, I think the competition is what drives the interest for women as well. And then once you're there, it does become sort of this uh, camaraderie through a, a, a common uh, battleground, if you will. And you look forward to that year after year. Okay, let's say you have the first pick in the draft. Stefania, I'll start with you. Who are you taking and why? Well, it has to be running back Christian McCaffrey. I mean, in fantasy, you want players who score no matter what way they do it. And here's a running back who had over 100 receptions last year. He's a threat in the open field or in the end zone. And Sage, how about you? Any other direction you might consider at number one? I'm kind of old school, too, where it's like you go for the player, and obviously the X's and O's and what he can do as an athlete. It's phenomenal to watch. I don't know. I might have to arm wrestle Stefania. (laughs) Stefania, how will Watson tools be a part of your process this year? I've been using uh, the Watson boom bust feature uh, pretty regularly the last couple of years, so I'm already familiar with that. And that gives me a good idea on game day of who might exceed what their projection is as far as the boom rate. And I like to look at that a lot. But I'm excited about the trade assistant this year because every good athlete evaluates their strengths and weaknesses. And so since my sport is fantasy football, I have to look at my weaknesses, which are trades. If I had to pick a part of my game, I'm good on the waiver wire, but I tend to not trade as often as I think I should. So it's a great way of helping me gauge trade value without giving away my secrets to my fellow competitors. All right, Stefania, I want to have you and I want to bring Field Yates into the conversation here as well as we get ready to run our IBM Fantasy Football League draft. And, you know, we talk all the time about guys who may hold out, may not participate in camp. And it seems those guys pull up early with injuries early because they don't have a ton of live reps. So, Stefania, there's no preseason this year. What do you anticipate on that front? This is a really interesting question, and everyone I've talked to at the various clubs has a lot of concern because of the altered offseason with no OTAs, people coming into training camp in various forms of conditioning, depending what they had access to as far as working out. And then typically, we see soft tissue injuries when you have an increase in volume and intensity of work. And that's why as camp ramps up around the second or third week, that's when we tend to see an injury spike. You need live game reps to really fully acclimate to playing in a game. So I can tell you that clubs are concerned that the first couple weeks of the regular season might end up looking like when we get to the first couple weeks of a typical preseason in terms of an increase in those soft tissue injuries. All right. Obviously, that's something to keep an eye on. Now, Field, we have talked throughout the show about trade assistant with Watson and what this new tool on the ESPN Fantasy platform can do to increase trades. How much do you anticipate that will influence the number of transactions we see this season. Yeah, I suspect there will be a flurry of activity right out of the gates in the regular season, Greeny, because we are always projecting in fantasy football. That is the name of this game that we are playing. But think about all the players we have excitement surrounding, whether they are players who are rookies or the number of incredible stars who switch teams this offseason. And we haven't even seen these guys take a preseason game snap. So there are going to be some players that either unexpectedly perform well to be beginning of the year or players who slump out of the gates it's going to be a flurry of trade activity all right those are some great insights from all of our fantasy experts field and stefania thank you thanks to all the celebrity managers for stopping by and it's now the moment we've all been waiting for our first pick in the draft our draft order has been chosen at random we're ready to get started the first pick belongs to field yates yates you're on the clock I was blessed with the number one overall pick, and there was no decision to be made during this process. It's Christian McCaffrey. 
It's just the third player in history to ever have 1,000 rushing yards and 1,000 receiving yards in a single season. As a matter of fact, I think he'll become the first player to ever do it twice in his career. He'll do it again this year. Give me Christian McCaffrey to start everything off. Fair enough. That's a good pick. It was the pick I was expecting you to make, and I was particularly interested because I got the second pick. And with the second pick in the draft, I am taking Saquon Barkley, mostly because you, Field Yates, told me to do that. When you were on my TV show this morning on Get Up, you said, if you have the second pick in the draft, you take Saquon Barkley. And that's exactly what I did. He's spectacular. The third pick in this draft belongs to the Hall of Famer Ed Reed. Ed Reed, you're on the clock. Man, this one gonna hurt me, but it's fantasy football, so I can do this. And I'm gonna go to that great state of Texas and go to Dallas. Give me Ezekiel Elliott. That's a good pick. Zeke goes number three. Elizabeth O'Brien is next up. She has the fourth pick in this draft. Everyone calls her Elo at IBM. All right, Elizabeth, you're on the clock. Who do you like? Well, I had Alvin Kamara last year. He did a great job for me. So uh, he's coming back to my team. Nicely done. All right, next up, the recently retired Eli Manning has the fifth pick in this draft. Eli, you're on the clock. Yeah, there seems a little bit of a theme going on with running backs uh, going, going early in this draft. I'm going to stay with that uh, motto and stay with that theme and just go with Dalvin Cook. So uh, he can tote the ball, catches the ball well at the backfield. He's a full three-down you know, three back, and uh, I think that's the, uh, that's the best guy on the board right now. Dalvin Cook goes number five to Eli Manning. Next up was last year's champion in this league, Noah Sykin is on the clock. Noah? Take it away. Okay, well, I've had him on my team for any number of years, and it just gets better every time. Derek Henry, Big Thunder, coming your way. Like it. Derek Henry goes off the board at number six. Next up is the man they call the Big Swagoo. Marcus Spears has the seventh pick in our fantasy draft. Take it away, Swagoo. With the seventh pick, the Swagoo select Nick Chubb. That is who I'm going with. They are going to tote that note this year, G. Nick Chubb. I like it. Nick Chubb goes off the board in the seventh pick in the first round. Stefania Bell is up at number eight, scouring through all the injury possibilities. And where do they lead you? Well, you know, I said the most impactful rookie I expected to be was Clyde edwards Lair, and I'm so happy that he's still here for me. So that is who I am going to draft is Clyde edwards Lair. Like I said, availability and opportunity. I expect him to put up a lot of points for me this year. Okay. Clyde edwards Lair is the first rookie off the board. Aaron Bauman is next up from IBM. Go ahead, Aaron. Who do you like at number nine? Excellent. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go down the board a little bit. S slight reach, uh, but I feel like you can't stop him. You can only contain this guy. And I'm going to pick Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. The pick is official. Well done. And finishing up round one of our draft is ESPN's own Sage Steele. Sagey, who do you like at number 10? You know, I'm just shocked that McCaffrey's not there. I'm shocked that Derrick Henry's not there. I mean, as I got to bring up the rear here. Um, honestly, I, I'm, I'm, this might be questionable, according to some of our experts. I'm going to Green Bay for Aaron Jones. I mean, I, you always go running back in that first round, right? There's my pick. My running back first is Jones. Okay, folks, the 10th pick is in. Now, we're going to go finish up drafting our teams, but be sure to check out ESPN's new trade assistant with Watson. And we hope that you will find that very useful, along with all the Watson insights available exclusively on ESPN Fantasy Football. And we invite you to stay on top of all the action in our league this season. Just visit ibm.com slash win. Thank you so much for watching the IBM Fantasy Football League draft special. Have a fantastic fantasy season, everybody. We'll see you soon.